Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World, brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Please visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and in this week's episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a tournament uh, bracket-style game to kind of find out what the best attraction is at Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. Now, we haven't included parades, shows, or fireworks so it's just kind of attractions with like moving parts and whatnot but uh, to help me have this conversation today we have miss denny sunderly hi there Corey fiescanaro hey everybody and of course always the glue that keeps us held together craig williams Ahoy, ahoy. So this will be part one of a two-part episode. Uh, So there's just so many attractions at Magic Kingdom that we have to get through. Uh, Then also we want to keep you on the edge of your seat. And also I want to note, if you are watching, if you're listening, hopefully you're not going to notice. But if you're watching, you're going to see some things kind of change throughout the episode, including uh, the lighting in our rooms. We had a couple of technical difficulties while we were filming this episode, uh, but I didn't feel like it was enough to throw the episode away and have to re-record it again. So I am doing sort of a patch here and there, and hopefully it'll be as seamless as possible. But you're going to notice the lighting and the filming on me specifically changes and and whatnot. So it'll be a fun game for you out there if you're watching to spot when the mistakes happen. But if you're listening, you won't even know. So we're going to just dive right in here. We've got a lot of attractions to go through. Um, first up on our, uh, our, our list is Small World versus P. Peter Pan, and Denny, I'm going to want to hear from you first. Yeah, okay. So, Small World versus uh, Peter Pan's Flight. This is a really hard one for me personally. Um, My sister and I have history with It's a Small World. When she's down visiting and she's on it and I'm not there, she'd call me, I'd call her, vice versa. It was great. But it's got to be Peter Pan's Flight. It just has to be. There's something so completely magical about that attraction and um, I am completely enamored with it at all times so for me it's Peter Pan's flight all right Craig Williams what about you I am a huge fan of payoff attractions and I I have to look at it in this way and it's a small world I'm gonna get a eight minute attraction with usually probably around a 20 minute wait versus Peter Pan's flight where if you don't have a fast pass for it then you're looking at roughly say an hour wait for a minute and a half long attraction so it's a small world wins Oh, okay. All right. Corey Fiescanaro, what do you say? Yeah, I still I have such an attachment to both of these attractions, and if you put Small World up against about half of the other attractions in the Magic Kingdom, I'd probably advance Small World. But in this case, uh, Peter Pan's Flight is a top five in the park for me. Uh, probably closer to like the three spot, I'd, I'd say it would take, or maybe the four. Probably the four. Um, but Peter Pan's Flight, it's got to be it's gotta be that for me. Well... We are now finding out we have a flaw in our system because there are only four of us and I am going with Small World. So uh, for me, yeah, that Mary Blair, the history of the park. And I I just, uh, I, you know, Craig actually made a really solid argument about uh, the time you waiting versus the payoff there for it. And... I, I've also said that I am not in love with Peter Pan's Flight. I was thinking, oh, well, it has an interesting choice of uh, a, a attraction vehicle with the pirate ships, but I have to lean into Small World. Um, honestly, I don't know what to do in this situation. I'm going to flip a coin, I Give think. me a second. Give oh, me a second. Okay. Okay. He's, Craig's no, don't, gonna... don't even flip the coin. Okay. The coin is being held. We're holding the coin for ourselves here. Um, Let's move on to the next one. Okay, we're going to come back to that one, all right? That one's being left with a question mark right now. Um, mm-hmm. So next up, we've got Liberty Square River Vo- Riverboat excuse me, versus the Tomorrowland Speedway. Fiesco, what do you think? For me, it's the Riverboat, hands down. Uh, Speedway, I mentioned this many times. I don't like that smell. It protrudes into Tomorrowland. I think Tomorrowland should resemble more of tomorrow and not the smell of how the highways would smell, you know, in like the forties. So riverboat, hands down. Den Denny, what do you think? 
All right, riverboat versus speedway. I love uh, the speedway. I have nothing against it. Um, I I think there's just such great simple joy in it uh, for all ages. But for me, it is the riverboat that takes the cake. It um, it's just uh, again magical. But I love the little vignettes that they put on along the side of the river for you to be able to see. Um, when you're on the riverboat, I love the narration of it. I love the fact that you get these special views of the Magic Kingdom, of Frontierland, um, that you don't get to see anywhere else. So for me, it's the riverboat. What about you, Craig? Are you ready to weigh in? Mm, yeah, I guess I, you know, part of me wanted to say the Speedway because I, as I've argued about it before in other ways, it's it does offer an experience for kids especially that a lot can't get in any other form they might not have a go truck go kart track around them or anything but the riverboat for me is just it's it is iconic disney so i i would have to go riverboat yeah um and i i think um they both kind of give you that uh, kind of retro vibe in today's today's world, but there is something like Denny said about the views that you get. I also have always been a fan of like uh, grist mills and whatnot, where the the water is tur- churning, and the fact that a riverboat has that type of like a rudder or a motor in it is also something I've always been fascinated about since I was a kid. So I pick it over that. Not that I don't like the speedway either. I do love a good uh, a good classic. Uh, hole in the ozone layer burning attraction there but i'm putting riverboat down as the winner for that one also i texted jackie and she said peter pan's flight Uh. and maybe next time we do one of these we actually include her (laughs) yeah we could um yeah she's she's got a laptop she can do these for sure um All right, gang, we're moving on. Uh, Craig, I'm going to let you go first on the next one because it's Seven Dwarfs Mine Train versus Space Mountain. Uh, hands down, Space Mountain. It is, I, I just, I have will never, ever, ever love Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. It was not designed for adults in mind. Not that Space Mountain is much better in that regards, but at least I can get in the front seat of Space Mountain and I'm still very comfortable. And on top of that, I love the Star Tunnel music. It is, I love that old fashioned style of roller coaster where you feel like you're always coming close to death. I'm all about Space Mountain. All right, uh, Denny, what do you think? Okay, so Seven Dwarves versus Space Mountain. Yikes. Yeah, no, that, that's no hands that it's hands down for me. There's no debate. So I do not have a height issue getting on and off of Seven Dwarves Mine Train. So for me, I really enjoy it. I like the addition to, um, to the Magic Kingdom that it brings. I like that there's a little bit of a thrill attraction um, right there. Now, I know that Space Mountain, I'm, I'm voting this over Space Mountain which is like the thrill attraction in the Magic Kingdom. But as I've said on shows in the past, Space Mountain is not my friend. I will go on it for family members, for my niece who is visiting in town. But that is about it. So, yep, for me, it's definitely Seven Dwarfs. Okay, um, Fiasco, who hates roller coasters, you weigh in now. I cannot go on Space Mountain without having severe back pain getting off of it so hands down mine train although uh to the credit of space mountain i guess uh, i woke up this morning with with severe back pain and that was just getting up in my bed and i and i see some of the comments being like uh how old are you i'm nearly 30 uh but the time i did in the navy was double time that so i'm like i'm like more like 38 40 so um hands down for me mine train can't go on space mountain um, I too am, think I'm just leaning towards Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I do have the I, I do agree with Craig. It was not very well designed for anybody that is of a certain height. You know, taller than five feet, it gets a little rough getting in there. But um, I just I solely kind of pick it on like the innovation involved with it. Whereas I feel like Space Mountain for me is just like if this was and I hate to do it again, Disneyland versus, uh, if this was Disneyland Space Mountain, I would have went 100% with there. If they redo the track, I could re revisit this. But So Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is winning out that one. Um, Denny, you're going to go first now. Dumbo the Flying Elephant versus Haunted Mansion. 
Okay, so both Dumbo and Haunted Mansion are classic attractions, um, totally. I have to go with Haunted Mansion, just based on how often I am riding that attraction. I will pick that over Dumbo any day. Um, so while they're both classic, I'm more frequently uh, prone to ride Haunted Mansion. Uh, what about you, Craig? I would be choosing Dumbo with it. I have said before, I don't think there is much more iconic about Walt Disney World or Disney parks in general than Dumbo. It's If you ask someone what Haunted Mansion is, they might not know what it is. But if you ask them if they knew they could ride Dumbo at a Disney park, you know they're going to say yes. Okay, I understand that reasoning. I am going to lean into Haunted Mansion. I feel like I've said it uh, before on the show where I do feel like this is kind of that culmination of like Disney storytelling within an attraction with a unique ride vehicle. I love that it's spooky but not scary. And, um, it, you know, it was it was my speed of a thing growing up and still to this day. So Haunted Mansion's going to win that one. Uh, that was a tough one, though. Um, next up, Philhar Magic versus Country Bear Jamboree. Craig? That is another simple one with Country Bear Jamboree. It's just, it, it is an attraction that was built for Florida and is everything about Walt Disney World. And it's raunchy. It's hilarious. The music is toe-tapping. It is, it's all around perfect. What do you think, Fiasco? Country Bear Jamboree, for sure. It's just one of those, uh, that, those shows that age with you. Uh, you go there as a kid, you love it for what it is, for the singing bears and stuff like that. I believe we mentioned that once before. And then uh, as you get older, it's just funny. You know, you just pick up on all the things that went over your head as a kid, and it's just funny. And it's, again, one of those things that I find myself doing over and over and over again, whereas Fill Our Magic, I still think it's great. Uh, but that's one of those things that I'll take people who are here on vacation from up north, and it was it's their first time in Disney since they were... 14 i'm like oh we got to make sure we hit up everything this is including fill our magic whereas country bear is something that i'll be at magic kingdom on a tuesday and we'll make sure we hit it up you know so um what do you think denny i love fill our magic nothing against fill our magic i love the addition of the scents um that they pipe in um and pump out for that attraction but for me it's country bear jamboree um you know, along the lines of what Craig said, it is cheeky. I love the cheekiness of it. I love that it is just so classic. And um, and any time I get to be in there is, is a good time. Um, so just like everybody said, it's a classic. So it's Country Bears. Yeah, I think Country Bear is just one of those uh, great things that uh, it, you know, it can play different for you in every area of your life. When you're younger, you're like, look at these crazy bears and they're talking and singing. And then when you get older, you're like, oh, my God, what were my parents letting me watch? Like, uh, and I so I just love that it's like kind of this it speaks to you on different levels, like through generations, you know. And so Country Bear, it is next up. Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh versus Big Thunder Mountain. Denny, give me your opinion. Okay, Pooh versus Big Thunder Mountain. So um, I love uh, Winnie the Pooh. I love the attraction uh, itself, just the bounciness. You bounce along the, you know, the, the track. I really enjoy it. However, Big Thunder, for me, it is almost a perfect attraction. I love the thrill. I love the theming, the details the whole nine yards. Um, and I wrote on it uh, when I was little with my grandmother, who was just about the coolest person. So Big Thunder. What about you, Fiasco? Yeah, I'm going to go with Big Thunder, too. Uh, out of the three mountains at Magic Kingdom, Big Thunder would have to be my favorite. Uh, I'm a big dark ride person over coasters, though. There's no surprise to that to anybody. But Winnie the Pooh I'd probably put near the bottom of my favorite dark rides at Magic. Um, I feel like it's obviously targeted more towards kids, but like I bring my three-year-old nephew uh, onto Winnie the Pooh, who I feel like is probably the target audience. And it's like you go to the um, the Tigger World, and it's like it's like a nightmare. And he's like, ah, ah, ah and it gets scared. So I mean, yeah, thunder. All right, Craig, what do you think? Yeah, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is proof that you can take a 
what is in concept not a very thrilling roller coaster, but add in the right detail and story and setting, and you're left with something that is an all around great attraction. So that wins. All right. I also agree. Bing Thunder Mountain for me. I, I What I like about it, too, is that it's a coaster that never act, really has a, an essentially like a really scary high point, um, even though it does have that hill climb and there are, you know, sides you look out and you're like, oh, but you're never like incredibly high in the air. And, you know, and I, I just love a good I just love the theme all around, too. And I love watching it just kind of go through. Um, so that wins. Um that wins that round. Next up, we've got Enchanted Tiki Room versus uh, The Little Mermaid, which is not the actual uh, title of the attraction, but I forgot to write down its official name. So that's what I'm calling it. Um, Craig, what, what do you think here? This is the one time where I'm just going to let my bias take over and not talk about what I think is genuinely probably the better. But Enchanted Tiki Room, it's classic. I mean, it's uh, part of the reason why animatronics have come as far as they have. But I also love tiki culture, as you can see behind me. Or if you are listening, uh, I will just tell you I have tons of tiki mugs right behind my shoulder right now that you you would see if you're watching so uh clearly i have to side for it but little mermaid it's a great dark ride and you know when ursula's face isn't falling off it it looks fantastic so uh, yeah what do you think uh, fiasco yeah so this is one of the ones where i'm gonna kind of have to go off my path of how i've been picking these so far and picking the one that I'm most likely to go to uh, because I am usually going to Little Mermaid more often than I'm going to Tiki Room. However, I still do think Tiki Room is better and I still think my gut tells me you like that attraction more. So I'm going to go with Tiki Room. What about you, Denny? What do you think? For me, it's Tiki Room all the way. I love Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. I love that. Um, but, however, it is the classic attraction. It is Tiki Room. My favorite part of the whole thing is when the storms start to happen outside the windows and the rain starts falling. That's um, completely uh, just, again, magical. Tiki room. Yeah, I think um, actually you, for me, that's my favorite part, the storm outside of the windows, because like, I love that it feels like the the world has changed while you're in there. And I think there is still a lot to be said about the fact that the birds all sing. And it's, it's just one of those, you kind of leave and I feel like it leaves this impression. Also, I like that it's like attraction not based on something. Whereas Little Mermaid is kind of, if you've seen the movie, not that you know exactly what you're going to do in the ride, but like it's still basically like just a moving through a movie ride. So I, I, I like it in that aspect of an experience. So Tiki Room wins out. Next up, we've got Hall of Presidents versus Carousel of Progress. I'm going to go first this time. And for me, hands down, Carousel of Progress. There's no question this is Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. Um, I just love that this is always... I. I Yes, do we think it could use some updates? For sure. Could it use some TLC? Obviously. But it's just something to me that I think that you have to see it because I, I, the song is catchy. I just love that it's all about like how we're moving forward as, in, in, uh, as a humanity as a whole and stuff like that. And so I would like to see more of the story. But I, it just – it's got to win for me. Uh Jenny, what do you think? I know you've got a tough one on the block here. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> this is not fair. Hall of Presidents versus Carousel of Progress. I am someone who absolutely loves Hall of Presidents. This is an attraction that I frequently visit. I will sit as far forward as they will let you um, on that on that front row, and I will sit there with tears in my eyes. And it really doesn't matter who the president is at the time. I just sit there in rapt attention, looking, you know, all over, just watching all the small um, gestures and mannerisms and movements of the animatronics. That being said. Carousel of Progress is Carousel of Progress, and that is, um, again, a classic. I sing and hum when they tell you to sing, and um, and I love it. There's, it, it's got to be, it's got to be Carousel of Progress. What do you think, Craig? It is tight for me too because I am very much like Denny. I love Hall of Presidents. I, I'm not in that camp that says, oh. You know, we should keep politics out of out of our vacations and such. It doesn't have a place. But, you know, it's 
Walt Disney has always embraced, whether it was just having Lincoln or the plans for uh, a greater purpose with Disneyland. I mean, it's it Hall of Presidents has its place in Disney history. And it really just I, I would probably choose it over most of the stuff on this list. But one of those ones where it's going up against Carousel of Progress and it's Carousel is just. That's uh, something that even if you don't know what it is, you should you should be forced into learning what it is and, and experience it. What about you, Fiasco? Carousel of Progress, hands down. This is like quintessential like Disney magic. I always, no matter how many times I, I go on this, I always come off like just filled with happiness and that message of there being a great big beautiful tomorrow at the end of every day um this is one of those attractions that i feel like if walt disney world ever said hey we're thinking about closing this thing down uh you would have droves of people chain themselves to to the theater and just not let any progress uh go on so yeah definitely All right, Carousel has it. So um, next up, we have Monsters, Inc. versus Tom Sawyer's Island. Denny, you go. Monsters, Inc. versus uh, Tom Sawyer. Okay, so for me, I will do Monsters, Inc. when my niece and nephew are in town, and I will love every minute of it. Um, But it's got to be Tom Sawyer Island. It's getting on that raft and going out to the island. It's the animatronics inside of the fort. It's all the nooks and crannies, all the details that they've added just for sheer enjoyment. My favorite part are those rocking chairs and you get such a neat view of Big Thunder across the water. Um, it's it, So it's gotta be, it, it's uh, it's Tom Sawyer Island. Um, what about you, Fiasco? Uh, this is like, this is a tough one on like the opposite spectrum of me liking both things because these are actually two things that I really don't care for at all. Uh, I never, yeah. I never really find myself going over to the island unless like I need to. And like, I don't want to go on laugh floor unless it's like s- somebody's here and they've never done it. Um, so... I'm probably going to go with the island based on nostalgia. Um, Craig, you? Yeah, Tom Sawyer Island. I mean, that's uh, it's a playground for kids where you don't have to worry, assuming they don't go and try to jump in the, the rivers of America. <laughs> Off the I mean, it's they have that entire that entire area is just a place to run around in have a great time and it's it might not be perfect for adults but if you had the chance to visit walt disney world or disneyland as a kid and you loved the island back then you'll still get that rush of nostalgia every time you go over there even though it might not be for you now dave and uh, i'm gonna be that guy and point out though rhino you keep calling it tom sawyer's island it's tom sawyer island tom Same. sawyer island i'm sorry yeah, i do do like, that. it's it's not Cinderella's castle. It's Cinderella castle. Oh, yeah. gosh. But it belongs to her. <laughs> she did not actually get the mortgage for it. It's under Prince Charming's name. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Tom Sawyer Island for me. I, I went over there recently because I had a friend who said they'd never been over there. And it was kind of interesting because I hadn't been over there in years. And, you know, it's a fun place to explore. And now as an adult and somebody, the you know, one of the beauties of being an annual pass holder is you look at the park in different ways than you do as somebody who's only vacationing here and one of the things i liked is the rocking chairs that i was like i completely forgot about these so i could come over here and relax and just kind of sit for a little bit and enjoy and um and i just have never really enjoyed monsters inc i feel really stressed out they're gonna pick me to be the person to make fun of and it's always kind of the same jokes so i'm i don't I don't really like it. The overlays I like that they're doing for the holidays, but meh, I don't, I don't care. If it disappeared tomorrow, I'd be like, whatever. Um, next up, we've got Barnstormer versus the Walt Disney World Railroad. Mm, Craig? Uh, Walt Disney World Railroad for me. Uh, Barnstormer is cute, and I, I do, even though I don't fit in there and I jump out before it pulls into the station, It's I, I, think, I think every main castle park should have a railroad and it's yeah so walt disney world railroad what about you denny for me it's the railroad it's uh walt loved railroads it's it's gotta be it's just this peaceful 
time out from a busy park day. Again, I love the vignettes that they've put on either side of the railroad. I love the theming, their narration track that plays. Uh, love Barnstormer was recently on it with a dear friend of mine. It is over in a matter of moments, uh, and it's not as, you know, there's some thrill to it. But yeah, it's got to be a railroad. Um, and Fiasco, what about you? Yeah, railroad for me too. It's just that timeless must-have Disney attraction. Um, and as far as the Barnstorm is concerned, I do think it's great. And I think it's, um, along with stuff like Slinky Dog, that perfect first coaster for like a young a young kid. Um, perfect in, you know, getting the, dipping their toes in the water and experiencing more thrilly type rides, even though it's not that thrilly. Um, it's the perfect starter. So, but still, railroad. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think what's cool is that it is it it does make you feel like you are kind of traveling through time when you're on it. It's an it's an older time railroad. It's different than, um, you know, just if you live near a a a, a, a a metro station or something like that. It's it's kind of this cool. It really does put you into that Walt Disney vibe, and I love it. And I'll always pick train oriented stuff usually. And the Barnstormer is a really good like kids coaster, but I just again it lasts for like two seconds. So for me, the 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 more the better experience is is the railroad. So next up, we have Swiss Family Treehouse, uh, the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse versus Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, fiasco. Why don't you go first? Yeah, there's a number of things I would advance the Treehouse over, but Pirates is not one of them. Pirates is my favorite attraction in all of Walt Disney World, uh, so that's going to have to take the cake for me. Just from everything, from the animatronics to the the music. Uh, just the theming, the atmosphere, the smells, the, the smells of that Disney water and that musty smell that they that they pump in. Um, I just I love this attraction so much. I love the Disneyland one even more. But uh, with that being said, it's still my number one here in world. So, yep. What about you, Denny? Okay, this one is a tough one because um, good gravy. Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse is iconic it's classic you're not going to get another attraction similar to it like it um in walt disney world so but it it's pirates of the caribbean that's the one that takes my vote in during this bracket in this bracket pirates is my second favorite attraction in all of walt disney world and I don't think you get much more classic than that. That drop, I mean, my dad psyched me up when I was a kid that this seven-foot drop was going to be so much bigger than it was. And and that whole, just, I love it. I love it. I love it. Pirates. What do you think, Craig? I would be going Treehouse. So I, you know, it's it solely is based on the fact that I can get other Pirates-like experiences at Walt Disney World, because essentially it's a boat using a dark ride set up. But with Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, I mean, there's not a lot of places where you can experience what it would be like to to live in a treehouse. And I've always I've never lost fascination with it where pirates to me, it's there's other things you could do that are just as just as good as that experience. Well, it's hard for me because Swiss Family Robinson is definitely one of my favorite um, Disney movies growing up. And so I'm happy to have that on Disney Plus. And, um, you know, and it's ironically got pirates in it as well. So it's, you know, it's a great adventure film. My The only reason I think I'm just leaning a little bit towards pirates is because it has a little bit more of that story element to the attraction where it's kind of showing you... I, I feel like you, if you haven't seen a move, the movie, uh, the Swiss Family Robinson movie, you don't need to have seen Pirates of the Caribbean because obviously the movie is based on the attraction. But I'm sure there's new generations who believe the attraction is based on the movie or whatever. But um, I think that you kind of you might not lose a little bit, but it, it it like when I having seen the movie a lot, I I see a lot of stuff where I'm like, oh, cool, 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 and I. You know, not to think the kids won't think it's cool. I just am saying pirates because it edges it out just a little bit for me, just a little bit. But I, if they ever tried to take Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse down, I would be one of those people that chains myself to it. So, um, next up we have Enchanted Tales with Belle versus the Jungle Cruise. Craig Williams. Simple. That would be uh, Jungle Cruise solely because, uh, well, Enchanted Tales with Belle is one of my least favorite things at Walt Disney World. Uh, definitely Magic Kingdom, maybe all of Walt Disney World, uh, 
And Jungle Cruise is, you know, it, it can be either a, a painful attraction for 10 minutes if you have a terrible skipper, but it also has the potential to be one of the best attractions because it could change every single time. And, you know, it's not getting holidays into it, but Jingle Cruise rules supreme. So Jungle Cruise. Uh, what do you think, Denny? Okay, so Craig might need an intervention with um, his feelings toward Belle and Enchanted Tales with Belle. But um, when you pit the two of them together, while I do love Enchanted Tales with Belle, I love the um, opportunity that they give kids and parents and whomever's in there to interact with the story. I really enjoy that element of it. It's got to be Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise is a different attraction depending on the time of day that you are on it so it could be at night at dusk i've been on it when it's been sprinkling and that even adds a really neat uh cool element to it so for me it is jungle cruise and i do i love uh as well i love it when it, it becomes the jingle cruise the just the costume elements the different um theming that they put on the attraction the different jokes it's Jungle Cruise. Um, I think I definitely lean toward Jungle Cruise as well. Not to say that Enchanted Tales with Belle is as uh, horrifying as Craig kind of paints it to be, but um, I think it's it's limited to being like an experience that maybe it's definitely leans into the younger kid part of it. If you don't have a really young kid, I feel like you miss out on some of that aspects, and the audience participation stuff makes me a little anxious, but... Um, I do think like the Lumiere animatronic is cool, but Jungle Cruise is one of those things where it's funny. Um, it's all ages, you know, uh, now you have that risk. Will your boat sink? Will it not sink? You know, it adds that, that level of excitement there. So I'm going to pick Jungle Cruise as well. Um, and finally, the last uh, match for this episode is going to be uh, the Mad Tea Party versus Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Uh fiasco what do you think yeah it's gonna have to be buzz you're not gonna get me on teacups um i like that teacups exists and i wouldn't want to see it go away because it does just looking at it gives you those disney vibes but it's just something i would never get on um even when you're in a cup that's not spinning fast and nobody in your group wants to spin fast just the motion that the teacups creates or that type of ride creates just does it to me gives me a headache makes me feel sick um, and Buzz, Light, Buzz Lightyear is always a lot of fun for me and whoever goes on with me. I am terrible at it. I never, ever get a good score. Many of my friends are just extreme experts. And by the time we enter the second room, already have maxed out their points at 9999999. I don't know how they do it. They've explained to me a little bit how they do it, but I still don't get it. And I never do that well. But still, Buzz Lightyear over teacups any day. And uh, Denny, what do you say? Okay, for me, this is not a hard decision at all. Um, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin gets it over um, Mad Tea Party. Now, I do love Mad Tea Party. I love standing there and watching it. I don't love being on it so much, but I love uh, just watching it from afar. I love how they have rethemed it recently for hard ticket events. Just the different lighting, the dry ice, the different music. That's all really, really cool um, to see employed but it is it's going to be space ranger spin for me i will lose if i ever go on it with you i'm not good at it but it's a whole lot of fun what do you think craig for me i'm gonna go with mad tea party i i i just prefer it more i've not i i i do i will go on buzz Lightyear space ranger spin but i just eh. You know, at least with Mad Tea Party, I can get on and not feel like I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just Mad Tea Party. No thoughts. I, I do see that Mad Tea Party is a little bit more, it has, it, it, it's iconic. You know, it's in the Disney, when you think of Disney World, a lot of times as people will say teacups. You know what I mean? It's been around for forever. Um, but for me, I d definitely go with Buzz Lightyear. I, I like um, the interactivity of Buzz Lightyear, and I like that it has that repeat, repeat ability. I also suffer from massive motion sickness, so I just don't like the teacups in general. But I like watching people do the teacups, but I, I pick Buzz Lightyear for that 
that reason. So Buzz Lightyear is going to win out on that round. So I I know I said we only had um, one left, but I uh, did not scroll all the way down and had stuff left off my list here. So uh, we actually have just uh, two more rounds to go, and then one attraction is going to get a buy this week. So first up is Splash Mountain versus Prince Charming Regal Carousel. So this one, there's two attractions here that I really do not frequent much. Um, but the one that I probably frequent more is uh, is King Arthur Carousel. It's hard to get me on Splash Mountain because I am a wimp for that anxiety buildup that happens, like getting to the drop. I know it's such a fun boat dark ride leading up to it, and I love fun boat dark rides, but I cannot help but anticipate the drop the entire time. And even though I'm a grown adult, I sit there like not really being able to enjoy myself too much just thinking about the drop so carousel carousel okay uh denny what do you say fiasco i'm kind of like you there's some um i don't i don't get super anxious a lot but there is that moment just throughout the attraction going okay is this it is this it? it you know when's that big hill but i do when you look at the two of these i do enjoy splash mountain more than the carousel i love the carousel don't get me wrong however um splash mountain and that ginormous riverboat animatronic at the end of splash mountain that just takes the cake for me all right craig what do you say I say that Splash Mountain is the best attraction at Magic Kingdom without a wow. doubt. So that's simple. What? That's a bold yeah. statement. I thought you were I thought you were a country bear jamboree fella. That is my favorite. I said Splash Mountain is the best attraction. Interesting. Okay. Okay. All right, well, I guess uh, Splash Mountain's going to take it because I am picking that. Not because I think a classic carousel I, is great, but there is just so much more involved to Splash Mountain. And I wasted the first, like, 23 of my, uh, years of my life not going on Splash Mountain because I was too afraid. I thought it was just the drop. And so I, like a fool, never got to do it. And so I, re- I was like, I can't believe there was so much more to this ride than I ever thought there was. And... Uh, yeah, so I I'm gonna give it to Splash, and that's uh, that's how it's gonna be. Sorry. Next, we're gonna have Astro Orbiter versus uh, the the Flying Carpets. Uh, Fiasco. What do you think about those? So I'm not a huge fan of like the I forget the term that's used to describe the Dumbo like attractions. But if I were to pick a Dumbo like attraction, I would pick Dumbo. If I'd pick a second one, I'd pick Magic Carpet. So. Giving it to Magic Carpets. Wow, okay. Uh, Craig, what do you think? Astro Orbiter. It's a much more exciting experience. So if you're finding a way to take a hub and spoke attraction and, you know, actually make it worth worth experiencing, unless it's something classic like Dumbo, you stick it 30 feet up in the air, and that's going to have a pretty big impact. Denny, what do you think? Location, location, location. It's all about Astro Orbiter. It is It is exactly what you said, Craig. You are up high in the sky. There's a little feeling of peril as you are up there because you're up so high. And you get a view of the Magic Kingdom of Tomorrowland that you just aren't going to get anywhere else. Yeah, I'm going to go with Astro Orbiter as well, just because it, I am terrified of heights. And I do think that there's like something about it when I look at the ground and you look up and there's this cool fixture that's just spinning around that it adds this like this. It's just exciting. It's terrifying. I think you get a little bit more emotional out of the fly, out of more emotion out of that than flying carpets, which I find to be a little just kind of boring and in the way but that's just me that's just me there is actually a video out there of me crying on astro orbit or somewhere so um oh. with that said uh and i was uh, over like i think i was like 25 years old when this video was taken too which is extra embarrassing so um so with that said we do have one attraction that is going to get the buy in this round uh because of the uh odd number of attractions here or and uh, that's going to be a Steve Porter favorite, which is the uh, People Mover. So that next time we'll have to face off against Astro Orbiter. But uh, for just so you know, all of the attractions that have made it into round two are Peter Pan's Flight, uh, the River Boat, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Haunted Mansion, Country Bear Jamboree, Big Thunder Mountain, Tiki Room, Carousel, Tom Sawyer Island, 
the uh, Walt Disney World Railroad, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jungle Cruise, Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, Splash Mountain, Astro Orbiter, and the People Mover. Those are all going to go head-to-head in the next episode in part two of our bracket tournament. Uh, Thank you, everybody out there for listening and watching. Thank you, everyone, for having this conversation. Uh, Remember, if you are planning your trip to Walt Disney World, please let the experts over at Dreams Unlimited Travel uh, lend a hand in that. And uh, that'll do it for this episode. We'll see you next time with another episode of The Best and Worst of Walt Disney World.